Hey everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my fall series. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. For this project, I'm going to be using two packages of the bamboo rings that they sell from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take the smaller hoops and put them together in this formation. Now you can go ahead and make two of these and make one big and one small. Today I'm just going to be making one and it's going to be the smaller hoops. This is an embarrassingly old pillowcase from my son, bless his heart. He moved out on his own. I am totally not responsible for this, but he finally got rid of it when it disintegrated in the washing machine. And then I said, hey, can I have this? Because this is the perfect material to do what I'm showing you right here, how you just cut it and then it tears beautifully and it's got that, you know, the nice little ragged edges, perfect rag craft. So I'm gonna use some of those little strips to tie the top of this together and the bottom to hold it into place. Next, I'm just gonna be going and tying these little rag strips on all over the hoops to cover every last inch of wood. I'm not gonna double knot them, I guess, or knot them. I'm just gonna tie them once and tie them really tight and kind of push them together really tight. That helps hold them in place as well. If you haven't guessed already, we are making a little rag pumpkin. I'm going to use this Hobby Lobby ribbon that I got 50% off, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up the center, and I'm also going to cut the edges off because it's wire. But I, I know you could pull the wire out, but I also don't want that little black edge there. Um, I just want the whole thing to kind of match the rag look. The end of this ribbon or the edges of this ribbon will fray a little bit and I just felt that tied in more with the fraying of the pillowcase. I'm also going to use some buffalo check ribbon because that's perfect for fall and do the exact same thing. So this is what's called a messy bow. That's what I'm making. I have a full bow tutorial video called 10 Bow Hacks out there that shows you how I make every single one of my bows. It's time stamped. So if you wanna go see how I made that bow, go ahead and check out that video. It will be down below in my description box. For the stem, I decided to take some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope. I just kind of took a little, it's not the full thickness rope, it's kind of, you can see I pulled one strip away from it because I wanted it to bend back and forth and look more like the, it comes apart in all those like little mini threads. And I thought that would look really cool to get the stem to look more like all those little mini threads glued together because that kind of looks like a real pumpkin stem. So now I'm just adding some different fall leaves. I'm going to add some Spanish moss. I'm just going to go ahead and decorate this little rag pumpkin. These are some Dollar Tree candle pillars that you find in the candle section. I bought two of them and I'm using the color Antique Parchment in Apple Barrel Paint just to give it one coat. I'm going to go ahead and paint both of these first before I glue them together. I'm using Gorilla Glue for this, it's hot glue, and I just found it strong enough to hold this craft together because it is just seasonal. I'm not gonna throw it across the room or anything. If you want a super, super strong hold, go ahead and use like a super glue or a Gorilla Super Glue E6000. I don't like that because the smell is just too intense for me, but any kind of really strong glue like that will work. There's also multi-purpose hot glues. I've got a great one down below in my description box. It's meant to hold glass, plastic, wood, everything. And that would also work for this craft. So now I'm taking some of my homemade chalk paint and I'm gonna go ahead and paint this little wood round that I got from Walmart for a dollar. So this is cheaper than the Dollar Tree. I am trying to go, you know, if I'm in the store buying other things, I do go down the craft section and pick up whatever I can that's still a dollar at Walmart. 
And then I decide that I actually don't really like the antique parchment. I've got a different idea for this. And I go ahead and paint the pillars again in white. I'm using the antique wax by Folk Art. Any antique wax will work, and I'm just giving it a light dry brush. I'm gonna dry brush this entire thing. I chose this color because I think it's a really warm color. It's perfect for the fall season, and we're just gonna distress it all the way, as you can see, all the way down to the bottom. Look how pretty that is. I love the wax for this. Next, I made this little piece here for another craft, and I never ended up using it. It's just the Dollar Tree Cube glued together with some craft sticks around the edge to make it look nice and neat. I chose to use this as the base here because it is heavy and it will hold my little pumpkin upright and this way I can just put the hot glue on top of that and I don't have to damage the stand I guess in case I want to use it for another holiday decor piece. You'll see me here playing around with the bottom, how I'm going to cover it with some fall leaves, greenery. I end up using Spanish moss. It comes up so beautiful. This is perfect for farmhouse, cottage, core styles, primitive, you name it. It's a beautiful fall piece. These are some leftover plastic Easter eggs, and I'm gonna go ahead and give them one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint. That one just tends to adhere a little bit better to the shiny surfaces because my homemade chalk paint, I just used a high quality acrylic paint. I don't have the other one left. And now I'm just taking the antique wax, giving it a dry brush. And then I'm using the Dollar Tree lightweight spackling, which I mixed with quite a bit of white paint to go ahead and start creating the top of my little acorns. So you wanna make it a little thicker, obviously, because the top of the acorns has to have that little lip. And then I'm just patting my craft stick to create all those little nooks and crannies and bumps that you see on acorns. At least the acorns where I live, they kind of look like this. I'm going to do this to all four of them and then let them dry. A nice little trick that I do with the lightweight spackling because it is very dry and crumbly is I add about a fourth cup of paint into the tub and as it dries out I just keep adding paint until it no longer works like a spackling but that takes a long time and usually I finish it before that happens. Once it's dry, I go ahead and take a nail file and just file off those really pointy tips that look like frosting because I definitely want this to look like an acorn and not like frosting. And now I'm using the color Nutmeg from Apple Barrel Paint and I'm gonna go ahead and start with my first coat on my little acorns. I did let the nutmeg color dry all the way before I start with the second color, which is Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel Paint. And this one, I'm not gonna paint it solid. I'm just gonna kind of tap it on. We're trying to recreate that dimension and look of the acorns. So while that's drying, I'm using this Folk Art Metallic Paint in Sterling Silver. This is a Dollar Tree basket. I picked up two or three of them because I had some good ideas for DIYs. I've already used it once. I think in one DIY video. This is my second one. And I'm just gonna paint it with that silver paint. I mean, it's just to make it look a little bit more, you know, again, for, for me anyway, fall, I go to the pumpkin patches, I hang out at farms. So it's a perfect time to do the farm look. Now I'm just taking some Elephant Gray from Apple Barrel Paint. I tapped it on with that sponge to make it look a little bit like the real acorns do around my house. And I decide to take the wax that's the antique wax there. Use it just a tissue, it's not a baby wipe, and just kind of stain them. Look at that. 
Isn't that cute? I mean, that looks like a real acorn, at least my acorns around here, the ones off my little oak trees. <laughs> That's what they look like. I think all acorns kind of look different depending on where you live. They might have subtle variations, but more or less that's my acorns. And then I'm using Spanish moss in the bottom of this tray. I do have some trouble getting these guys to stand up, so I have to use a little bit of hot glue just to hold them a bit more steady. And then I decide, you know, oh my gosh. I, well, I didn't decide, I actually realized Oh my gosh, they don't have a stem on the top. I need to add a stem. So I go outside, I grab a twig off the ground and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those down and make some cute little stems for these guys. And you also saw me trimming the Spanish moss. Obviously, you know, if you put it in there, it gets a little wild and wooly. So you do need to trim that with some scissors. And now I'm applying those little stems. Look how cute they are. And just to add a little extra touch of cuteness, I do take some raffia and make little individual bows for each one of those stems. Next, you're gonna see me take the furniture marker from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a set of three in the color Walnut. And I'm just gonna go around the edge there where I couldn't quite get the wax to go all the way to the top and I didn't want any white to show, but it also emphasizes and defines where that little lip is on the edge of a real acorn. So it comes up super, super cute. These are so cute in real life. I hope the camera does them justice, but they are one of my favorites today. So this is a family sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's a little electrical candle thing. It's super cute, but I just want the family part off of it. And as you can see, it comes apart really easy. And I don't know what was up with me with antique parchment in this video. I went ahead and painted everything in antique parchment because I think I was looking for warmth because it's an autumn craft. And then I went, well, that's not gonna pop enough. You're not gonna see that. So I end up painting this family sign white after I painted it with the antique parchment. Here's some Dollar Tree books. I haven't done this craft yet. They're always fun though, aren't they? The books when the seasons come, you know, the holidays, they're so much fun. I usually make them out of wood or out of the tumbling tower blocks. This time I'm actually going to use the books and I was after black books. So usually I can't find the black books. That's why I skip it because I love the black for fall. I think that's perfect. And I'm just cutting off the edge there so I can get a measurement. And we're going to be using the vinyl here from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use this for a template so we can get the right width. And I'm gonna cut out three book edges. I'm not sure that's the right word for it. If it's not, you can go ahead and shout out in the comments. I absolutely love reading your comments. For me, it's one of the best parts of doing YouTube. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stick it down. It makes a beautiful edge and the vinyl makes a beautiful edge, period, for all of the books. You can even use shelving paper for this if you found the right kind of shelving paper. It's a great way to add character for a season or a feeling that you wanna give off or even just to match your home decor style and it's super easy to do. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and use this raffia to tie it together like you would with a gift. I have spoken about this raffia before. I bought it from Amazon. It comes in a package of three. It's, let's see, red, green, and then this color right here, and it's super strong. It's like a ribbon, so if you're interested, it's down below in my description box, and it's super cheap. It what was when I bought it. But I will say, the one thing that I kind of don't like about it is that, you know, there's that raffia that I used to have that was somewhere between a grass, like Spanish moss, not quite that, you know, thin and scattered. 
but not quite this thick like a hula skirt either it was it shredded and it kind of looked I think you guys know what I'm talking about. it almost looked like hay and I kind of miss that I'm gonna hunt for it and get some next time I'm at like the Hobby Lobby or Michaels I'm gonna try and get that for the fall crafts because I do love that look here's another one of my bows this is either the floral bow or the pom-pom bow they're kind of made the same way but one's thicker and uses more loops and it's in the bow video if you want to see how I made that I'm just going to go ahead and fix all those little loops. All I did was just use two ribbons to loop around and around together so that I had two different looks going on there. I thought that was kind of pretty. And now I'm taking my permanent marker and I'm going to go around and make like little faux stitches all around the words. But after I was done, I thought, I don't know, maybe I should have just left that white. Let me know what you think in the comments because I was looking at it. My family loves it, but I almost felt like... I don't know I had imagery of 101 Dalmatians going on there so <laughs> but I love it but I just wasn't sure you know I can change this you guys I can just paint over it so let me know what you think because I'd like to actually take a vote on that maybe I should put that in my community section but I would love to know what you guys think so I end up using some fall leaves, some twine, some raffia, and even some greenery because to be fair, when the trees first start to turn during fall, there are green leaves mixed in with the fall leaves. It's so pretty and I just felt like it was missing that pop of color. So I use a little bit of the Dollar Tree eucalyptus and just decorate this. I bought a bunch of these velvet pumpkins at one of the local craft stores here so I have them this year to use I was just in the mood they're really really cute smaller than the Dollar Tree so fun for decor like this and now I'm just going to wind up some of that raffia around my finger kind of make like a little spray formation and tuck it on the right side of the well kind of on the right towards the left just to balance the decor on the top of these books We're all done, and this is how my project came out. Next, I'm taking a pizza pan that I painted on the reverse side, so it's upside down. That's my favorite way to do it because it has that nice little ledge there for a border. And I used Rust-Oleum chalk paint so that it would adhere really well. I have good luck with that one. And I'm using the Elephant Gray by Apple Barrel Paint to do some dry brushing. This is a little wooden truck here that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I think they're carrying this all year round. At least at my Dollar Trees they are, so that's nice. And you can paint it any color you want for any season. I thought it would be fun to use the antique parchment to do this truck, and I am keeping it this time. I stayed with the antique parchment. So I'm just going to give it one coat, let it dry, and then I'm going to do some dry brushing with my antique wax. That's just my favorite look for the fall season it comes up perfect if you don't have a Dollar Tree or you're one of my international viewers you can always print these things up online like you can find the truck online print it up glue it down on a cereal box with a glue stick so it's nice and dry and kind of get that 3d look that way you can also use a thicker cardboard if you wanted to imitate wood more and then use a multi-purpose filler or polyfilla around the edges to cover that cardboard and camouflage it. On this part of the truck I decide I want that little wooden bit in the back that's supposed to be on the you know top of the truck to stand out so I'm using the wax full strength. Now I'm just taking some black paint and we're going to go ahead and paint the tires black and paint the center of them white. This is a little red barn I found on the clip art site where it's free and I will leave that link down below in my description box. Now I had to go ahead and print this up on regular computer paper because I had dry brushed the pizza pan. Now for those of you that watch my channel you know my favorite 
transfer method at the moment is using tissue paper, just like you would use for gifts, gift tissue paper. And I tape it onto cardstock and then run it through my printer and put it down that way. But because I had already done the dry brushing, you see, here's the great thing, the tissue paper, right? It's transparent. That's why I love it so much, but then it's transparent. So <laughs> I forgot and that would show the dry brushing through and it doesn't look good. So I ended up having to use computer paper. It was no big deal though. This came up so cute. It did not detract from it at all. In fact, it made it look kind of a little thicker and hardier, more like a more woodsy, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's paper, which is wood. And when it's thicker like this, it just kind of went with the barn look. So it worked out good. And I'm going to go ahead now and just dry brush some white paint on it. And then we're going to go and add the nautical rope around the edge. So I showed this in a previous video, how you can go ahead and take regular Amazon boxes, cut the little shapes that you want, and then just remove the paper top and you end up with this really neat serrated top. Use sandpaper and do it, or a sanding block and use it really lightly to get the rest off and it just makes for a super cute, free, you know, whatever you want to cut out of it. You can do Easter bunnies, pumpkins, it's just a great crafting piece. You can even make it look like faux galvanized because it is serrated like this or even just antiqued or aged metal. I'm using orange paint and then I'm taking the nutmeg brown from the apple barrel line. Both these colors are from the apple barrel line and dry brushed it on the front of this little pumpkin, used it for the stem and now I'm applying a little bit of the Spanish moss at the top. It's so cute and again these make such cute pieces or it's a cute material for all kinds of crafting. Christmas trees too. It just looks super cute. So now I'm taking the same Spanish moss. We're going to glue this underneath the truck. I just thought it kind of looked like hay or some of the stuff that sprawled on the ground in front of a barn. I thought that was cute. And for this truck I decided I wanted him like a 3D. So I'm using two of the Dollar Tree wooden cubes. I glue it on and then I'm going to glue it on the front of this little pizza pan here. Now I do glue it at a slight little angle where the truck looks like it's going uphill a little bit. I just thought that added more cuteness and character. You don't have to do that. I just like doing that. And because I did want the pumpkin to be at the front of my scene here where I'm filling up the back of the pumpkin, I do add a Dollar Tree cube to the back of that pumpkin so that I can lift him up and move him towards the front of the fall scene there that I want to fill up in the back of this truck. And it's almost like a little vase. You can start tucking anything you want down there that's fall. Leaves, flowers, even that like little small pieces of corn, 3D pumpkins, and there is some lavender leaves left over which I actually thought looked like a little vegetable kind of. I just thought it added some color and a more of a farm look. And we're all done and I absolutely love this. If you had fun today, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. I so look forward to seeing all of you each week. I love you guys. And until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.